company that would later become known as Marvel Comics was founded in 1939 by a man named Martin Goodman. Back then, Marvel was known as Timely Publications and later Timely Comics. In its first year, the company released their first comic titled Marvel Comics issue number one. It was a major success, selling hundreds of thousands of copies, featuring characters like the original Human Torch and Namor the Submariner. These two characters, along with Captain America making his debut in 1941, would remain as Marvel's most popular heroes throughout its early history. Early on, Goodman hired a young man named Stanley Lieber, who would go on to create many of the most popular Marvel characters we know today. Of course, you most likely know him by his pseudonym, Stan Lee. The 1960s saw the introduction of many teams and individual superheroes, antiheroes, and villains that would come to define what the company is today. Some examples are the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, the Hulk, Spider Man, Ultron, Thor, Guardians of the Galaxy, Iron Man, X Men, Doctor Doom, and Galactus, among so many others. In the coming decades, Marvel had its ups and downs and struggled to survive, due in part to a very unstable market, while also competing with its longtime rival, DC Comics. At the turn of the century, Marvel had some success with their live action movie adaptations. Titles like Blade, X Men, Spider Man, and Hulk would serve as the early instigators of the immensely popular and thriving superhero movie market we have today. In 2009, Marvel Entertainment, the parent company of Marvel Comics, was acquired by the Walt Disney Company, and with their initiative to launch the Marvel Cinematic Universe, superheroes are more popular than ever before. It was very close that Marvel never even came into existence. You see, in 1937, Martin Goodman was on his honeymoon in Europe with his wife. When it was time to return to the US, Goodman wanted to ride the exciting and marvelous Hindenburg airship. However, as he was late to buy tickets, he was unable to secure two seats next to each other, so the couple took a plane back instead. If two seats had been available, it's likely they would have perished in the inferno of the now famous Hindenburg disaster. In 1979, comic book artist Dave Cockrum decided to quit his job at Marvel. In the process, he also left a resignation letter explaining why he wanted to leave the company. Now, at roughly the same time, the comic Iron Man issue number 127 was released. In it, Tony Stark's butler Edwin Jarvis also decides to quit his job. Jarvis leaves a resignation letter as well, but it doesn't make much sense. As it turns out, someone at Marvel decided to use the resignation letter left by Cockrum in the comic, the only difference being that he replaced the word Marvel with Avengers. Three issues later, the confusing letter was explained as a mistake, but some think it was more of a deliberate prank. No one's really sure how the letter ended up in the comic. Wolverine is arguably one of the most popular members of the X-Men, if not one of Marvel's most popular characters overall. During his inception, they wanted to name him either the Wolverine or the Badger. Luckily, they chose the former. I, I mean, look at this thing. It's just a cute little badger. Now, once they did, the initial idea was for Wolverine to be an actual mutant Wolverine. This is even suggested in the comic X-Men issue number 98, where a scientist mentions that Wolverine is different from the rest of the mutants and doesn't even appear to be human. Another weird thing is that in the beginning, Marvel had a rule that Wolverine could not have visible arm hair while in costume, but when not in costume, it was completely fine. Superman kind of exists in the Marvel Universe. Well, at least his alternate personality, Clark Kent, does. In several comics published by Marvel over the years, he has been seen as a background character, even having a few lines here and there. However, this isn't exactly canon, and it isn't exactly Superman. Clark Kent in this case is just a normal news reporter, and is only included as a joke and a sort of cameo. It was never intended to be taken seriously. Something I have always wondered about is after an epic battle taking place in some fictional metropolis somewhere, who's responsible for cleaning up the mess these battles often leave behind? 
turns out that Marvel has actually tried to answer that question with an organization appropriately called Damage Control. Damage Control is a large corporation that uses advanced engineering technology to repair anything from an entire city to the Avengers Mansion in a very short amount of time. For example, they were responsible for rebuilding New York after the event known as World War Hulk. I mean, it's a major suspension of disbelief, but hey, at least it's better than just because magic. In 1984, Marvel was doing extremely well. They had a market share of around 70%, with DC Comics at somewhere around 20. In fact, for many years, DC Comics had struggled financially. So, in February of that year, the head of DC Comics' parent company, Warner Communications, called the president of Marvel because he wanted to give them the publishing rights for all of DC Comics' characters. Eventually, they reached an agreement and Marvel was actually set to acquire DC Comics, along with all of its characters like Superman, Batman, The Flash and so on. The reason this never happened was because it would have resulted in Marvel completely dominating the industry with a staggering 90% market share, meaning Marvel could essentially do whatever they wanted without any sort of competition. Today Marvel and DC are at a more equal footing with other publishers like Dark Horse and Image Comics not too far behind. Michael Jackson was a big fan of comics and had a whole collection of hard-to-find comic book collectibles. One of his favorite characters was Spider-Man. In the 1990s, Marvel was looking into making a live-action Spider-Man movie and when Michael Jackson heard of this, he wanted to be cast as the lead character, Peter Parker himself. He wanted to do this so badly that he attempted to actually buy Marvel Comics just so he could make and star in this movie. I um I I think we're all pretty happy that this never happened. Aside from the more common characters that get their own movies, TV shows and the like, Marvel has a lot of really weird and obscure characters as well. Some examples are the Pet Avengers, which is exactly what it sounds like. The Avengers if they were animals. Then there's Spider-Ham, which is Spider-Man if he were a pig. And his real name is not Peter Parker, but instead Peter Porker. The Phone Ranger, who is skilled at repairing phone lines and phones. Bird Brain, a human bird. Matador, who's a matador. Leapfrog, literally a man in a frog costume. And then there's Eye Scream, who has the ability to turn himself into ice cream. Why? A large part of the X-Men storylines follow the character's struggle to be accepted as ordinary people, how society sees them as freaks of nature and not humans. Which makes it kind of ironic how Marvel spent years trying to make the case that X-Men figurines should not be considered humans. They did this to avoid a certain tax rule that would have cost them a lot more money. The rule essentially states that human looking figurines should be defined as dolls while non-human characters are defined as toys. Sorry Xavier and company, even your creator thinks you're less than human. <laughs> 